Oh, what's up? How's it going? I'm gonna get coffee in this box. Jesus Murphy. Oh man, I, I actually slept pretty good last night though. You gotta be over six hours of the sleep. Probably a lot of tossing and turning. Feeling a lot better today, let me tell you. I can actually, you know, move around and stuff, so that's gotta be worth something. Oh, I feel really tired. <sighs> Nothing a coffee will fix. <laughs> oh, but well, it's Sunday here on Vlogging Life. I was debating on not filming today just to burn another one of my days down, but all oh, that'll happen next weekend, probably. Probably happen next weekend, probably. So, I forgot to mention this because, well, I just forgot. I was using this mixer thing that I bought the wrong way. Allow me to demonstrate. So, what I've been doing is I've been putting the lid on like this. Thinking that was the correct way, right? Well, I wasn't paying attention. See that lip? Yeah, that's actually supposed to go like this. But nobody called me out for it, so that's okay. But don't kid yourself, even putting the lid on the right way, the damn thing still leaks. Oh man, I need butter. You really should have checked that yesterday. What was it, the grocery store? Well, they already got butter one handed. That's freaking cold. Well, maybe tomorrow after work I'll swing by and grab some, some butters and coffee stuffs and other things and stuffs. And, oh, I'm just, I'm going to add protein powder to coffee. That's all my body needed yesterday. A lot of protein. Because I took in, when I ate that chicken, I kid you not, 25 minutes later, I felt great and then I got sore again. So I was like, okay, well, I know what the problem is. Body's trying to repair, and it needs to break down old material to make new material. Well, I don't want to wait. Let's just give it some new material. Whey protein. Eh? Give it what it wants. Let the body eat. Feed it. You gotta become a real boy if you're not getting real foods. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Oh yeah, the other thing that I uh, I noticed last night uh, before I went to bed. I was like, oh yeah, I never checked to make sure a video went live today because I had that issue before. And if it wasn't for mom saying, hey Adam, how come you didn't put up a video today? I thought you were doing a video every day now. I wouldn't have uh, known that uh, something got messed up. So I went and checked whew, to see if a video went live and sure enough, one did, but the wrong one. It was supposed to be the garage cleanup video. Instead, it was the I'm selling the motorcycle vehicle and I'm like, shit. Wrong friggin' wrong one went live. I, I, I mislabeled them. Well, I'm trying to say exactly how this thing goes on, but it's supposed to clip because if it doesn't clip, it's no good. Okay, I need uh, two hands. But don't kid yourself, even with it clipped on, it still pisses out the top. Like, such a horrible design, but it's 20 bucks. What do you expect for 20 bucks, right? And we're done. Coffee. To pick up the camera and the whole friggin' monopod folded back on itself. Dollar store, yo! Oh, climbing is not as awesome as I remember. Oh, I can't wait for things to. I can't wait for things to heal. Yeah, this uh, this selfie stick or whatever the hell it's called, ain't exactly the best. You know what, guys? Yesterday on the video, I screwed, like I said, uh, I think I said it. I can't remember. I was pretty tired a while ago. I probably missed it. But a while ago, um, by a while ago, I mean, I screwed up the video order. I uploaded the wrong video, uh, or set the wrong video to go live. I was supposed to have the garage cleanup video go live before the motorcycle being sold video. Anyway, one of the comments on that video, uh, Don Jones goes, no more evil Knievel stunt bike. And no, no more. Not after the cost of what I was quoted for insurance. That was not going to happen. I don't understand why it's like this, but in Ontario, probably Canada, but I don't know. I'm just going to go by Ontario. For some reason, any other bike but an enduro or a dual sport, whatever you want to call it, insurance is ridiculous for a new driver. For an M1 license, like if I were to get my M1, because that's what we do up here. You have your learner's permit, which is the M1. Then you have your M2 which is like a learner's permit as well. Like the M1, you're super restricted. You can ride the bike, but there's a lot of stipulations you gotta follow. M2 is basically like your M, except for it's a lot less restricted than the M1. And then your M, which is your full license, which is basically not as restricted, just follow the rules of the road. 
Well, on an M1 license, the Yamaha, that 84 Yamaha, that a super cheap, you know, not didn't pay much money for it, it was going to cost me close to $2,800 a year to insure. So that's about 200 bucks a month extra for a bike that is like literally three to five hundred dollars that I paid for it, right? Because they go for cheap. They're, they're, they're crappy bikes that nobody wants. Even though that one there's a 1984 and apparently it's rare, you know, you could have an albino turd, it's still a turd in the end. But, um, so then that, after that there's a comment here that says, uh, too bad he never did anything with it. Well, would you do something with a bike that's going to cost you a lot of money in insurance? I wouldn't. Even with the M.2, or the M.2, oh my god, hey, computer tech, nice. Even with the M2 lice, it was still going to cost me close to $1,100 a year. So that's about, you know, 90 bucks a month in insurance, we'll say. for. And the thing is, you got to insure it over the winter months, too. And you've seen our summers here. They go from May till about, I would say, September. We're uh, rolling on mid-October right now, and we've already seen snow out there a couple times. Would you pay insurance, 90 bucks a month insurance, on a vehicle that you can only drive five months out of the year? If the insurance was cheaper, sure. But here in Canada, for some reason, a dual sport would have cost me half that. So, well, at least in Ontario. Uh, cruisers and, and sports bikes and sport touring bikes, the insurance rates are higher, but they give you a cheaper deal on like a DR650 or or the Yamaha version of that or whatever the case like these sports touring bikes and if it's under 600 cc it's a better price even though a 600 c or 650 DR650 would probably outrun that Yamaha YJ750 it's still for some reason the, the YJ is more insurance I, I don't understand the logic behind it, but whatever it is, it is. But uh, there was a comment here from uh, another individual. Uh, well, you can read it yourself. It's going to be at the bottom of the video. Uh, where he basically says, I hope he sells the Trans Am next. Let someone who wants to actually fix it up before it rots out. He's been saying since I subbed, I'll fix it next year. Well, obviously, uh, GWC New Look uh, subbed back in 2016 because prior to that I've been driving the car uh, 2013 I drove it 2014 I drove it. I think 2015 is when I parked it and I never put it back on the road because I just didn't want to deal with the extra cost of insurance and it's kind of sat there because of financial situations like uh, to that at the end of 2015 is when I became jobless when I was laid off from Ontario, and 2016 was the whole call center vape shop ordeal where I wasn't making much money and I was burning through my savings. And then 2017 was when I got the job I got now, and then so on and so forth. But um, the whole reason why I never did any fixing up or spray painting it was number one, I wasn't about to do that in my driveway, my neighbor's cars are right there. And number two, I was so damn depressed, I just didn't care. I was so freaking out of it, so loopy, so depressed, and I just, I didn't, I didn't care. Now, that and I couldn't even sit in the damn car, it practically killed me to move it to where it is now. Um, <laughs> because I was just too damn fat. And then I couldn't imagine trying to paint the car being that heavy, because I probably would have done more damage to myself than anything. But now that I'm feeling good... And if I would have gotten rid of that bike earlier in the year, I'm, I'm eager to get out there and start playing with that paint gun. I haven't purchased the paint stripper yet, but I plan on it. I'll probably pick that up. I know exactly where to get it now. They're, actually, there's three shops in town that sell it. Unfortunately, Walmart is not one of them. Our, our Walmarts suck compared to a lot of the ones in the U.S. You guys got a lot better stuff in your Walmarts than we do. I would take you for a tour through our Walmart, but they're heavily against people filming in there. Uh, Adrian and I used to do it back in the day and we got away with murder but that's when we're, they were open 24-7 now they're only open from 7 to 11 so they got about as much stock in there too as a 7 to 11 or 7-11 I should say now that I'm feeling a lot better I'm not depressed I'm feeling good I really want to get my muscle car back up and running I'd really like to drive that car again and the thing is is to get it running all I gotta do is turn a key there's nothing mechanical wrong with it yeah, I'm still going to get it looked over by uh, a mechanic, 
like once it's on the road and insured and all that, I'm going to make an appointment. I'm not going to drive it until a certified mechanic actually looks over the brake lines, looks over everything, you know, gives her a one-two look over, make sure everything's copacetic before I start ripping around the roads because the last thing I need to be doing is going 50 kilometers down the road, have to come to a stop, hit the brakes, blow a line and freaking just rear end someone and end it all or worst case hurt someone else. Uh, it definitely is going into a shop to have it investigate uh, to make sure that everything's uh, good to go you know uh, all I want to do is make sure the uh, the brakes because I don't know what I'm looking I'm not a mechanic guys so I'm gonna have somebody look it over and make sure that it's good to go and get her all up the car and up the snuff because I do miss my car I miss driving that thing that thing was fun to drive even though my truck has like probably three times the horsepower in it a lot more performance that car is still super fun to drive because it's like wherever you point the nose it goes it works and it does a good job the whole thing I've been trying to do is get my garage cleared out and with the motorcycle being sold soon the snowblower being sold I'll, I'll be down to one snowblower lawn tractor lawnmower next summer I, I could easily put the lawn the lawn tractor out in the yard the snowblower, I can put it out in the yard and tarp it, or put it up on the cement slab of back of the house and tarp it. And the push mower, just fire it down into the pit, and uh, we're good. We got the whole garage floor wide open. Pull the car in, and we're we're ready to go. Put the barbecue outside and tarp it, and plenty of room, right? And then I can start playing around with paint. We can strip all the old paint off the car and lay down a new primer and do some body work and make it look good and. Lay down some paint. It'll be freaking sweet. Get it looking all good again and then get her into the shop and get it all diagnosed and start driving it again. And I'd like to figure out a way where I can actually store it in the garage for the winter. Get it out of the elements. Because that was the whole reason why when I bought this house I wanted a garage was a place to put my summer car. Because I eat back in the day, before, like well, the first year I bought it, it was stored outside. The second year, I stored it at a friend's house in their garage because they weren't using it. So I ended up paying him 200 bucks for the season. And he just let me use his garage to store the car. Uh, I did that for two years. And then, where the hell did I store it after that? I can't remember where I stored it after that. I had it stored at a bunch of different locations. I remember one time I rented a... Uh, I don't know what they call it, but it's like a storage, like a storage container, if you will. But uh, up at the base, and that was uh, 50 bucks a month because my buddy ended up renting out his house, and the guys that were in there, I asked him if he would just rent me the garage and let me have the garage full time, because uh, I was willing to pay 50 bucks a month for that. But he said no, so I ended up renting a storage container up uh, by the military base and storing the car up there. It worked. It worked. I did that there for a couple of years, and then I bought this place. Originally, the house, every house I looked at had either an attached or a detached garage, and that's what I wanted. For somewhere I can keep my car close to home, so in the winter, if I missed it, I could walk out and go look at it and be happy. Yeah, uh, really, really, really uh, want to get my car back up and running. But I'm seriously thinking that putting a new spoiler on the car is going to be a pain in the ass, so I'm probably just going to take that off and weld up the holes that are there. Or at least attempt to. <laughs> My welding's not the greatest. But I figure if I get some pieces of flat stock, put them behind the hole, weld them in there, and then fill the hole with weld, grind it flat, make it look good, put some, some body filler over it, sand it flat, it should be okay. Up here, I'm thinking it should be okay, but we'll see what happens. I'm not the same Adam I used to be. The Adam from before, this whole journey of weight loss and good foods and stuff, that guy was lazy. That guy would find excuses not to do stuff. That guy would uh, basically rather sit around and eat potato chips and watch TV than to actually be proactive and get things done. I'm not that guy anymore. And if you still think I'm that guy, well, you got to quit living in the past and figure it out. Anyway, i got to finish my coffee because it's uh, 5 after 7 and I'm out of here in 25 minutes. So I'll talk to you guys later, okay? <laughs> Funny story. I didn't even realize... I haven't been paying any attention to that trailer park boys game and there's an event going on right now but luckily the uh, the things they're giving you for actually completing it are uh, pretty crappy so who cares 
that and it's a video game so who cares like i said on yesterday's video this is the reason why i like games like black ops blackout and so on and so forth is because you don't have to pay attention to them you know you log in play a couple rounds and then when you got something better to do with your life you go do it where games like my buddy was like oh there's a new mmo coming out just check it out man it's right now it's if you can get the level whatever it is you can play for free and you don't have to pay the monthly subscription and i'm like no i don't feel like doing the grind i, I honestly do not feel like doing that grind anymore i don't want to play games where you got to spend a lot of time like grand theft auto the reason why i don't play that anymore is because oh man i should have fired up that truck a little sooner than later she's all frosted over son of a but uh you know, like Grand Theft Auto, you got to basically pay attention to the damn thing and do stuff all the freaking time now, or you don't make the money, and then you can't do anything. Like to buy the cars, like and and have the best of the best. And the thing is, is the flavor of the week changes so damn often that you can never get the the flavor of the week. You know, it's like all of a sudden one day this car is the best and the next day this car is the best and the next day this car is the best tell me you're just wet oh thank god i was gonna say it's not that cold out right now it's it sucks but it's not like super sucks so this should just wipe off sweet all right let's get you guys on the old tripod and let's go to work yeah like a lot of people ask me adam how come you don't play grand theft auto anymore and it's because i can't be bothered with that grind like, like they got the uh, nightclubs now they got the nightclubs now and they got like all sorts of different things you gotta buy and like holy who has time for that i used to have time for that but that was the old me and that's what i'm trying to say I'm not that same guy that was vlogging daily last time. Like, sure, I drive the same truck and I'm doing the same drives to work and all that, but that's just, well, my life's kind of boring and I'm trying to find ways to add content to the vlogs. But I'm not that same Adam that would make up excuses to not get things done. And obviously, I'm like some vloggers out there, like some people do this full time. This is their, this is their bread and butter. This is their job. Where for me, this is just a side bitch, you know? This is just, I make my money from working. I just do this because I like doing editing and I'm, you know, I'm trying to make things a little bit more funny. Like I did on that one video when I kind of blew myself up with a special effect and, you know, uh, I, I want to make things more entertaining and, and better, but in reality, my life is like a lot of yours, you know? You, go to work you get home from work you just want to sit down and relax have your dinner and go to bed and wake up and rinse and repeat the next day and I'm just one of those guys who picks up a camera and films it so I'm not even upset about the view count <laughs> I don't expect people to like flock to the channel and watch it that's why I mentioned like the 100k subs is kind of an unrealistic goal because why would people want to come and watch my shit when you can watch somebody who fabricates shit because they have time to actually think this shit up like McJugger Nuggets and and, and and all these other people out there who are like you know basically fabricating a life that will cause drama to push views to the channel I'm not like that I just film it as it is and toss it up on YouTube you know broadcast yourself that's the whole logic behind YouTube isn't it but yeah just going on about uh, I mentioned McJugger Nuggets there I watched this video yesterday and he was talking about how YouTube screwed up and uh, basically they stopped pushing everybody's video at one point because something broke on the algorithm site and blah 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 whatever and I looked at my video, my video was fine, so I, I don't understand what's going on, but I don't know when he when he uploaded that, or when he filmed that and edited it. I'm pretty sure that he's no longer living at Michael's, he's probably gone by now. And they just filmed a bunch of shit in one day and then uploaded it and went from there. Yeah, like, he started talking about his uh, Storyfire site and how he wants to use, take over YouTube. But then he starts talking about it, like, Oh yeah, you'll be you'll have to pitch us a deal on a series that you want to create. And if we approve it, we'll go ahead and, and do it. And it's like, okay, so that means you gotta make fake content. A guy like me doing what I'm doing right now, basically filming his life, filming his journey into weight loss and all that, I won't stand a chance on there because I'm not gonna script stuff, I'm not gonna make up stories, I'm not going to 
I don't want to be fake. Like, I was chatting with my cousin, and he goes, you know what I like about your channel, eh? I said, well, what's that? What, what is he's like, you're just a regular average Joe, living a regular average Joe's life. A lot of people can relate to that because they live the same life where they get up in the morning, they don't want to do stuff. They don't want to lose weight. Well, they want to lose weight, but they just don't want to go through the hustle. You know, you're, you're just a regular average Joe doing a regular average Joe shit. And a lot of people really enjoy that because you're not fake. You're keeping it real and you're just going through the motions. And I thought about it and went, you know what? That makes sense. You know, this is the reason why the TV deal, that they when they wanted to make a reality show, that's why they approached me because I'm doing what I'm doing. And I said no because they wanted to basically take over my site and tell me I couldn't go on YouTube anymore and stuff like that. And it just wasn't worth it because I didn't think it would be good on TV. I was pretty sure it would go the way of the dodo pretty damn quick. That would be like a one season, we're shutting her down. BT Dubs can't go on YouTube because you signed this contract. And if we do see you on YouTube, uh, we're gonna sue the shit out of you. So I figured, no, no, me okay. TV life is not for me, not for me. That's some people's goals and aspirations is to be on TV. You know what? Getting famous is frig. A lot of us, like, I, I look at all these people, like Kid Behind a Camera, Jugger Nuggets, Lance 2010, uh, all these di different guys that, like, Boogie and all them, and they have fans just showing up at their doors. I don't want that. I don't want randoms just showing up at my house and wanting to hang out thinking they're welcome. It's like, dude, I live a life. You can't do that. Yeah, That's what public meetups are for. You don't just show up at someone's freaking house uninvited. Hell, in some states, I'm pretty sure if you did that, you could probably get shot. So that's not safe. No, I don't want that life. I just like making videos and people need to realize that. Yeah. Okay, tell me your wings work. Jesus. It has wings, walks away. Stupid seagulls. But anyway, I'm almost at work, guys. Um, I'm going to shut her down here. We'll talk more afterwards, as always. And we'll go from there. Let's get this Sunday shift over with. All right. Peace, though. Frig out. Just another day for you and me in paradise. Paradise got it on. We are done for the weekend. Tomorrow, we put in a simple four-hour shift. And two days off of doing I have no idea what. Normally I plan out my days off. Like I don't, you know, I, I was talking earlier about scripting videos and all that. But like I don't script out what I'm going to say. I just plan out like, okay, well I got two days coming up. Like, like I did with the garage cleanup. Thought it was going to take a little longer than it did. Turned out it didn't. But, you know, I usually make plans. And this time I, I, I didn't. I didn't make plans for my two days off. I know the next time I do this, I won't have any two days off because I'll be, uh, I'll be working. I'll be, um, like the next time I go on to this shift where I'm like, I work Monday for two, uh, from two till whenever, or eight, sorry, yeah, from eight till noon, uh, there was a guy who needed some time off. So I offered to take his two shifts and I asked my boss, I'm like, do you really need me to come in from eight to noon? Or can I just work his two, three to 11s? Cause it transitions lovely into a night shift. So I'll be working that week, uh, Monday from eight to 12, Tuesday, three to 11, Wednesday, three to 11. And then Thursday from 11 to seven, then Friday, 11 to seven, Saturday, seven to seven, Sunday, seven to seven, Monday, three to or 11 to three or 11 to seven, Tuesday, 11 to seven, Wednesday, 11, you know, and then I'm off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, freaking Sunday. It's the perfect transition into the night shifts. And it's gonna be a boatload of hours and more money in the bank. And lately, um, I might as well bank as much money as I can get my hands on before Uncle Dougie goes and slaps our wages. Now, a lot of people are saying he can't do that. He can't take it away from us now that we have it, but people got to realize that uh, labor law doesn't quite apply the same to a contract employee or a temp agency employee as it does to a part-time employee that's actually employed by the company they're working for. Like the company I'm working for doesn't employ me, it's the contract company. The company I'm working for, they actually contact the contract company, get me on board, 
but in reality I'm not an employee of said company I'm an employee of the contractor you see you see how that works so it's under whole different labor laws this is where 15 and fairness made a lot of sense because it gave us some sort of a, a, a protection where they couldn't just push us around like lap dogs like honestly if you think about it contract companies are are pretty much like call centers if you will where like a company will contact a call center and be like we'll pay you $25 an hour per agent take it easy no reason for that you can dodge chargers squawking the tires um, but no like they'll pay like 25 bucks an hour to a company per per agent to basically do their call center stuff but then they then the call center itself will turn around and pay the agent like 13 bucks an hour and net 12 so that's how call centers make their bank the more people that got on the phones making the calls the more money they're making in their hands but if they're not re meeting the credentials then they get penalized by the company like if the company says we need you to handle 2,000 customers a day and that's not happening you know they get pissed off and then they're like well you know what you only did 1800 not 2000 so uh yeah we're taking some money back because you didn't meet the credentials a lot of them do that contract companies don't have that stipulation we just got to do it or what the uh i guess the rent to own company does like the only metrics i have at work are or like show up on time literally that's all i got just don't be late show up for your shift and don't be late because if you're late too often your contract's terminated thanks for coming out gg which makes perfect sense like if you can't show up to your job on time then oh hey figure it out you know i showed up at ontario one time late but that was my fault because i forgot to turn my no i set my alarm but i put it on p.m not a.m that's what it was so it didn't really go off what went off was my phone ringing as my boss is like adam you're an hour late what the hell's going on and i'm like i just woke up dude my alarm didn't go off <laughs> And yeah, I haven't been late at this job yet. So, wow, it smells like somebody just mowed their lawn. Anyway, people, I'm almost home. I will chime back in once there. All right, peace. Man, it's pretty funny. My legs, like, I just get out of the truck there. My legs are killing me. Then I get walking and they feel great. Can I lock this thing? Nope. Didn't even lock my back door. I swear I was in a rush today. Hey, Oreos. Hey, who's the puppy? You want to go outside? What do you say? Okay, you gotta, you gotta just stop snorting and stuff. You sound like a freaking pig. <laughs> wow. You need Kleenex? You just using your tongue? I see. There's a collar on here somewhere, right? There you go. You ready? Steady? Ready? Go. He doesn't like that game. I think while well, he rocks a piss, I'm gonna do the same. Alrighty, I know it's not quite five o'clock yet, but I'm freaking starved. Not really starved. I just said that for dramatical purposes. But I'm gonna cook myself 0 0.5 grams. What? Oh, it's 500 grams of uh, pork chops or pork. Pork center loin. Pork loin center chop boneless. It makes frickin' pork chops. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna edit up what we have in the vlog already because, uh, oh man, stair climbing still sucks. But uh, no, I wanna get this here all edited up, I'm ready for more editing. Why the frig not? Because the less work I have to do later tonight, the better. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. Meat, it's what I crave. Well, have my dinner. It's good. My legs feel a hell of a lot. Are you coming down? Oh, you're up there. I keep thinking she's going to come down the stairs, and I don't want to step if she's going to run in front of me, because I might accidentally step on her, because she is just a little kitten after all. But, uh, no, I'm feeling really good after dinner. My legs are almost not hurting anymore. And you know what? Something I remember from back in the day of doing the MMA training, uh, back when I was with the X there, we used to go to this place called Marceau's School of Kickboxing. Holy crap, I need two hands. Basically, after the first night of going there, uh, we did this thing where you jump side to side using nothing but your calves to push you off the ground. And you just like, like, boom, 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 boom. Kind of like, let me, let me see if I can aim it down and show you. So you're like, boom, 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 boom. Really fast, gotta watch if the dog's getting excited. And you do that for about five minutes. I didn't do it right there. I didn't give you a good depiction because I gotta be careful. The dog gets excited when you start jumping around. He thinks, all right, party mode. Tail goes up, he gets all excited and starts trying to go underneath your feet. Because, well, he's a Pomeranian, and they're not exactly the smartest creatures on the planet Earth. After the first night, I remember the next day I had to go to work, and I could barely climb the stairs. It was bad. 
Like I was destroyed completely. And Thursday came, it was every Tuesday and Thursday was the kickboxing portion. And that's all me and the ex wanted to do till later on when I decided to say, screw it and try more stuff. We, uh, sorry about the angles guys. I'm making a pre-workout shake right now. Get a little bit of energy cause I'm going to hit it hard tonight and be crippled tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yeah. So we ended up doing the uh, kickboxing and having a good time and getting crippled. And Thursday, I ended up not going because my legs were just shot. I couldn't. I remember he contacted me on Facebook and he goes, where the hell were you tonight? Girlfriend's here and girlfriend came and worked out. Why aren't you working on it? I'm like, dude, that workout you had me do on, uh, on Tuesday left me completely dead. I need to recover. And he said, you only need 24 hours to recover. Get your ass back in the gym. Come tomorrow. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I, I probably can. He goes, no, come tomorrow. Like it was 50 bucks a month and you could do really cool things. Like you could take kickboxing. Like um, the way it worked was Monday was um, Monday was either karate or jujitsu. So op or empty hand or jujitsu, which is like uh, holds and grapples and stuff. Okay. I think that's what it was. Could have been something else, but I think that's what jujitsu is. Tuesday was kickboxing. So basically practicing your form with your punches. I still have my punching gloves in here. My punching gloves, Jesus Murphy. My boxing gloves, they're up here somewhere. Yeah, they're right in here. Holy crap. I'm just stuck on my pellet gun and everything. You guys, anybody bought the uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, Grand Theft Auto 4 kit, the um, for Xbox, the complete set. Came with the metal case and this bag, the duffel. Well, inside this duffel, if I can get the sum bitch open, this is a two handed job too. Okay, how come vloggers don't get a third hand? But yeah, in, inside here, I have my kickboxing gloves. They're freaking brand new. I did use them, I used them a lot. Cause back then I was going a lot to that and then I had to quit because I became full-time knights. These things were awesome. You know what, they fit pretty good too. I even have the wraps in here, I think, because I bought some wraps for it. Yeah, right here, my wraps to wrap up your hands so that um, your fingers weren't spread apart. So if you accidentally did screw up a punch, you didn't blow your hand up. But I was going a lot. Like there was one part where uh, the ex, that's when she was working at Future Shop or Best Buy. Well, back, back then it was Future Shop and I was working at Ontara. That's when we were doing the shift work. One week days, one week nights, one week days, one week nights, and then there was a lot of moaning and groaning about the shift work and I was part of that moaning and groaning team because holy crap you couldn't get anything done and then they changed it up so that basically you either worked all time days or all time nights and I said cool I'll take nights because that worked better for me probably should have taken days and got used to it but I'm glad I went with nights because now I can do what I do now as in work this after hour shift at my current job and not be phased you're wondering what I'm doing Yes, I'm making more ice because I go through more ice in a day than anything. Oh my goodness, a lot of ice in a day. Some days I envy those people with those fridges that just fart out ice when you press the button. Because let me tell you, I doubt that thing working double overtime. The amount of times I fill up this 52 ounce friggin' jug and I put five to six ice cubes in it because I like my water to be super, super duper cold. But no, the one time she had to work all week, I think around four till nine or something like that. She had really shitty shifts and she couldn't go. So I did everything that week. I went Monday to karate and uh, did karate on Monday, which I already had experience in karate because I, did, I took Shotokan back in 94, 95 and 96. Would have taken it longer, but my sensei was uh, military and uh, anybody in Canada might be aware of this, but a lot of military families, usually every four years, you get posted to a new location, just like, you know, Don, Don 2323, well, he was in North Bay. Now he moved out to somewhere out on the, um, somewhere in, I think he's in Manitobas, maybe Alberta's, somewhere out there anyway. Um, but he got posted to a new base. And usually it's every four years they get posted. Well, he got posted and nobody picked up the slack and ran a course. So I was like, okay, well, now I got nobody to train with. I guess I'm going to put the old martial arts on hiatus and just do nothing. Which was a shame because martial arts was a good time. I learned a lot in there. A lot of discipline, a lot of respect, a lot of knowledge, and well, a lot of how to punch people in the face and make it freaking hurt. So after that, like I said, 2002 was the next, or 2000-ish was the next time I got real physical. No, 2002-ish, 2003, somewhere around, no, 2003 to 2005 is when Angry Joe and I got into the gym and we started giving her. And that's when I got down close, well, actually beyond the weight I am now. I got myself down to about 230 in the gym from 285 to, uh, 2.30, working out high protein, 
moderate carb, low fat diet, just rage in the cage, get in the gym and beat the living crap out of yourself, you know? And that was a good time. And then uh, there was a reason why I ended up quitting the gym and I can't remember what it was, but I ended up stopping. Going- oh yeah, cause I, I ended up hooking up with my ex in 2006. Not saying she's the reason why I quit, but in a kind of way, she was the reason why I quit because I ended up spending, never had time because I just wanted to spend it all with her, right? So it's like, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym. That's gonna take an hour. She wants me to come over now. So it's like, freak, what do I do? Well, you know what? You end up going over to your girlfriend's house and that's how it is, right? Because there's a chance she might let you touch her bum. So that's what you do. Actually, at the time I was still living with my parents, but then uh, when I got this house here in 2006, because her and I started dating back in like May 2000. Well, we officially started in June 2006. I got the house in August. So for the first two months, uh, we were just hanging. I bought this house actually in May, hooked up with her in June. And then in August, I moved into the house. And then three years later, she moved in permanently. When she moved in permanently, then uh, we started doing the kickboxing. So yeah, I would say we did the kickboxing from about, cause she wasn't, li- she was living with me. So it'd be 2009, 2010. And I never started vlogging on YouTube until 2011. So definitely did the kickboxing before the vlogging. It was a blast. But anyway, going back to the whole kickboxing story, the one week that she was off, I did everything. I did the karate on Monday, like I said. I had, I, I, I was a green belt in Shotokan for the three years I went. Uh, I was really good. I was enjoying it, doing the katas and all that. So when we did the karate there, um, it was kind of funny because they started doing the, oh, I can't remember the name of the kata now. It's been such a long time and this thing here is fading, but uh, it's one of the basic white to yellow belt katas. I, I can still perform the actions, probably not with perfect form because it's been so long and the bones are, you know, dem bones, they're a little stiff, but I, just, I, I can't remember the name of it now. Son of a bitch. But anyway. So one guy was throwing it off and he was doing it wrong. Like he couldn't do the one part where you come at the end and then you spin over and you do a punch, punch, punch. And then you got to spin back and he was going the wrong way. And I said, no, treat your, uh, treat your punching arm. Like you have a knife, put it into your shoulder. And as you slide down, you spin and then you go in and sensei comes up and he goes, you trained with sensei Hennick, didn't you? And I'm like, how'd you know? And he's like, because Sensei Hennick always used the knife te- uh, knife terminology. He goes, what degree were you then? And I said, oh, I, was, I only made it to green. And he's like, can you train for how long? I said, three years. And he's like, three years and you got green? Because guys, it goes white, white too, yellow, and then orange, and then green. And three years I managed to pull off green because I was just such a fast learner. I was so into it. Like I was, I'd be sitting at home during my karate time, like Monday karate, Thursday karate, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'd be at home practicing my katas getting them down to a science so that every four months he would grade students. And if you felt you were good enough, you could stand up and, and, and give her shit. And if you were good enough, well, congratulations, ceremony, you uh, level up, you know? <laughs> and I was trying my best to get to, to, to greatness. Like, just like with this weight loss diet, just like back in the day with Angry Joe in the gym and just like with kickboxing, when I put my mind to something, I want to get her done. And just like with this diet, I put my mind to it, I want to get it done. I want to hammer down. I want to give her, you know, give her all I got. Just like with vlogging. I know my goals are are, are impossible to obtain. 100K subscribers? Are you freaking kidding me making content like this? Come on. Pull your finger out of your arse, Adam, and figure it out, right? You got to do that. You got to motivate yourself. Got to keep yourself going. Got to gotta just freaking give her, boys. That's plan B it all the way. When plan A fails, when the actual plan fails, plan B, just give her. That's what you got to do. And that's what I've been doing. Just giving her. Plan A fails, plan B. Kind of sucked that he left because I was doing good in that. And then in the gym with Angry Joe, he thought I was going to be a joke. And I totally proved him wrong. And he was actually impressed to the point where he was actually looking to me for advice on workout ideas. So that was pretty cool. Because like I said, I research everything. I go into great detail about everything. What you don't see on camera is the research I put in, like painting that car next year. I've done research. People have talked to me on uh, on YouTube, made comments. I looked it up to confirm it and to see what I got to do to get around it. I got a whole grocery list of shit I got to buy to paint that car that I haven't picked up yet. And I I know exactly what store I'm going to to get it and every everything's laid out that's all scripted for next year <laughs> okay that's all scripted I already know what I'm doing I know what I'm getting how it's gonna get done only thing I can't predict is the outcome because like I've said I've never ever spray painted with that gun before so I'm gonna do some practice shots on a piece of wood or some random piece of crap in the garage cardboard or something just something that i can try it out on just to get an idea and a feel for the gun first we'll use some i'll buy some crappy paint they probably have some 
at the store that you can use just to you know get a taste but some people say just spray with water because it has the same consistency as the paint you're putting on your car so i'll try that but anyway so in the kickboxing the, the mma course monday was karate i did really good with that tuesday was kickboxing and he was always impressed at the fact that i did knuckle push-ups and that's because back in the martial art days when we would drop to do push-ups i couldn't bend my hands out like i had problems going flat and pushing off because it really it hurts ah, it hurts me there because of the carpal tunnel syndrome from using a computer for such a long time so he told me man up make knuckles and push off your knuckles and i said you can do that like you won't damage yourself because it's gonna suck but you're gonna tone up your knuckle and after that i did that that's the only way i can do push-ups now is fist floor these two knuckles right here push off of them just just push off of them when you're done these knuckles look all bruised and flat and stuff but they'll bounce back and then at least you know if you got to crack a guy across the skull these things here are going to be all conditioned to be able to, you know, just hammer someone. Uh, I don't advocate fighting, but sometimes if you have to, hey, you didn't hear it here. But anyway, uh, <laughs> and then Wednesday was really cool. It was weapon training. So basically, there are some people in there doing katas with size. One guy had like a wooden katana. That was pretty cool. I have that kid. I say kid because I think he was like eight. Should have seen this guy, man. He was nuts. He was moving around with that katana like a freaking ninja and I was like oh that's impressive and then they had me on the bow staff because I had nothing and he's like you don't have a weapon you're learning the bow staff it's like okay <laughs> did uh I did the bow staff and he basically taught you all the push pull and taught you the basic first kata and all that and I have one of the more advanced guys in there help me out because I was having issues with uh manipulating it and doing stuff and I just wasn't grasping it took me a bit but it was fun I really wish I could have got more into that Thursday was kickboxing again and Friday was basically when you came in everybody voted on what to do so we ended up doing uh weapons again which was actually pretty awesome so uh had a blast i miss it i'd love to get back into it if i ever went back to days i think i might pick it back up probably wouldn't do everything i found the kickboxing to be the best damn workout i ever did have because you would leave the dojo you would come home and the heat radiating off your body for the next four or five hours was through the roof i swear if i had a fitbit back then monitoring my heartbeat that sea sucker would have been in the 145 150 the whole four hours because jesus murphy you got home and all you wanted to do was drink a lake and try and relax as your heart's going brrr, like sounding like an apache helicopter because you were just devastated having you do boxing glove burpees but they're different like you do a push up off the ground and when you got back up you'd punch punch and the other person you were with had to like block block and then you would go do another burpee like not a burpee but like drop yeah i guess it is a burpee eh? when you drop down do a push up then you get back up or no do you jump up still trying to figure out burpees first time somebody told me to do a burpee guys i was like <coughs> you know one of those and uh apparently that's not what it is so <laughs> the more you know anyway i'm getting all hyped up here like i said my legs though they feel great after one day off but guys that gym is calling me the gym the gym is calling me it's calling my name it wants me to return so i'm gonna drive some water some c4 and collagen into my face we're gonna go downstairs we're gonna destroy ourselves again all right guys well just got done my workout actually i've been done for a while had a shower had a protein shake with some chia seeds threw some metamucils in there just for funsies and today was a good day check out these stats are you ready are you ready it don't matter you better be ready check out them digis 14,954 steps 131 minutes of working out today 3,655 calories and counting keep in mind it's only quarter after nine so probably gonna probably gonna hit about 3,800 and that'll be it and 6.93 miles walk today I should change that to kilometers because i am in canada but i don't care and for some reason it only says i climbed three floors today i know i've been up and down my stairs a lot oh right i wasn't wearing my fitbit at one point because i had to charge it my bad all right people i'm gonna call her quits for tonight this video has gone on long enough way longer than i anticipated church and i are gonna go give some call of duty a try again see you we can do any better than we did last night night because oh my god did i ever suck i was super tired though so hopefully tonight i'm a little bit more energetic a little bit more ready to pump we can have at her tomorrow like i said i work from 8 a.m to 12 p.m so like four hour shift what the dudes 
whatever it's money and then uh, I got a guy coming over to buy the bike so that should be gone whether or not I do the compressor tomorrow or Tuesday because I got Tuesday and Wednesday off and I need to find something to do on those days that's another story but uh, we'll see what we do on my days off and hopefully we can make some entertaining as freak videos so anyway people on that note thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed today's video if you did click that like button any questions comments concerns put them down below and until next time people keep on vlogging